Welcome to the Discovery Bible Study here at the Beltline Church of Christ. We're excited to be back with you again. We are in the middle of the book of Colossians, and today we're going to be looking at Colossians 2, verses 6 through 15. I want to encourage you to grab a Bible to follow along with us as we dive into this uh, this great, great, great section of Scripture. So much for us to talk about. <laughs> Uh, we were talking about, do we go all the way through chapter 3, or do we stop? And we said, we've got to stop. There's just too much in these verses. And so, nine verses packed full of good stuff. So let's dive in. Trey's going to read those verses from the New Living Translation, and away we go. <clears throat> and now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow Him. Let your roots grow down into Him, and let your lives be built on Him then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So, you, are, uh, you also are complete through your union with Christ who is the head over every ruler and authority. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins, and because of your sinful nature, it was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all your sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us, and he took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Man. That's good stuff. Isn't that great? Yes. Good stuff. Well, let's dive into our questions and see where the Holy Spirit leads us today. This is, this is tough. So, Question Keith, take one. it away. What do we learn about God from these passages? What do we learn about God from these passages? Um, I was trying to figure out which way I want to go, and, and I'm just going to be very simple today. God raises me from the dead because I'm dead through sin, and he raised me just like he did, did Jesus and he washes away all my sins. He, he washes away all the record of it. He, I mean, he, he does away with everything. I, just the concept of, of God loving me so much that, that he just does that, to, to me, is, is awesome. And Because and, I, I know I, I mess up many times, and, and, and God, as long as I'm walking, going back up to the first verse we read, he forgives me. And I just love that concept. Yeah, I love I love verse 14. Canceling the record of debt that stood against yes. us. I mean, that's mm. what God does. What an amazing God we have. Yes, Who absolutely. would be willing to do that and would be willing to suffer so that we could have that. It's it's incredible. It's and knowing what he allowed Jesus to go through because he loves me that much. Mm -hmm. so. well, only a father. Yes, that's right. That's right. Our mother. I, you know, we have that for our children, and we are his children, so... Um, uh, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> what jumps? Okay. The first thing that that I would say about God from this is verse nine. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. Jesus is God. Jesus is God with skin on. Jesus is God in flesh. Okay. Jesus is God, the Creator, the Sustainer, the End All. The God, the Creator of the universe. That's right. And so that is who Jesus is. And there's no way around it. When you when you get to this passage, that's right. and and so that's that's I think maybe the the main thing that I grab about God. What do I learn about God? Jesus is God, absolutely. And, and see, I was gonna say that, but I was afraid I would mess it up. And you said it very well. Where I'm gonna say, <laughs> well, good, all right. <laughs> we think that Jesus is in us. And Thanks for think, saving it for me. <laughs> but we think Jesus is in us, and then we think, well, Jesus is God, right? And the Holy Spirit is with God, and it's like they're all in me. And then we sit there and hold ourselves back because we're afraid to do stuff. I mean, I got God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit with me. It's like I should be fearless nothing, to go out and, yeah, and nothing and can be withheld yeah. when we walk with with them. Um, you know, I explain it to uh, to young people, and maybe we could explain it. To, it helps me understand the the fact that there is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but one God uh, with an egg. Uh, 
Yeah. You know, on a, on, in an egg, you have the shell, you have the white, and you have the yolk, but it's one egg. Mm -hmm. And uh, so maybe that's a simple way, I know, but that's what I need sometimes. And so, <laughs> but they are. They are one. And all of them are, are find, their, find their fullness in, in, in this human body who we see, we know, as Jesus Christ. But what I love about it is, yes, and, and this is how the ESV reads, for in him the whole fullness of the deity dwells bodily. So Jesus has all of, Jesus is God, as we've already yeah. said. But then he follows it up, and you have been filled in him. So he yes. keeps that filling idea. So just as Jesus was the representation of God, yeah. he now fills us to be his representatives to the world. And it's not just one time fill, it's no, filling. It's, it's a it constant, continual. continual. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the sanctification yes. that continues that's as exactly we right. walk in the light. Like I said. Man, that's good stuff. That's yeah, really good stuff. I Because like it, it does say you stand in the light. It's like, no, you're walking. No, you're walking. It's, it's a life. Yeah. yeah. Okay, can I do one more? Go right ahead. <laughs> okay, so the other thing that this reminds me of, and, and I was this actually um, this last week um, out at uh, Project Rescue, this was a, a discussion that I got to have with some of the guys there. Um, and it wasn't necessarily based in Colossians 2, but it, it made me think of it. Um, as he says um, that you were dead because of your sins, because of your sinful nature, you know, Isaiah 59, your sins have separated you from your God. Um, what it reminds me of is, uh, I think, the perfect picture of this or the illustration of this, but it occurs way back in Genesis 15. Remember the cleaving of the animals? Mm -hmm. this, this was a horrible, disgusting <laughs> yeah. thing, okay? But it was a cultural thing that happened uh, where, where Abram was coming from. This is the way they made a covenant. They took very expensive, very prized animals, and uh, they would literally cut them down the middle. Sorry, this is getting gross, I know. <laughs> Here comes Thanksgiving, right? Um, you <laughs> cut them. Gobble. They literally would cut these animals right down the middle and lay the halves on each side. And so several prized animals. And, and so this is messy. This is kind of gross. And two men who were coming into a covenant, and usually this was, okay, your daughters are going to marry my sons, my sons are going to marry your daughters, and all of our you know, land is going to become one eventually. Okay, So this is that kind of agreement, this covenant that they're making. Together. And the two men would then pass through the middle of all these animals and on the bottom of their cloaks of their garments it would pick up the nasty you know blood and guts and whatever else and it would stain it and that stain on the hem of their garment was a reminder kind of like a wedding ring is for us that that you're in a covenant this is something that continues this is something that you are in for life and if one of those guys stepped back from it what happened to the animals <laughs> happened to him and that was the custom you know that, well god uses that uh, in Genesis 15 to make a covenant, his, to seal his covenant with Abram. And, of course, he makes you know, the three promises, the, the land promise, the, the seed promise, and, um, nation, nation. The, and the great nation, the number, you know, as many as the stars in the sky. And, <clears throat> and yet, when it comes time to walk through, Abraham, he tells Abraham, prepare the, prepare the cleaving. And Abram does it, and then he causes <laughs> Abram to fall asleep. But Abram wakes up just in time to watch a fiery pot passed through the middle. God passed through the middle. Abram didn't. God did it. God sealed the covenant. God did it all on his own. And there's Abram, like us, asleep. Yeah. Asleep. And, 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 and it's, the reference is, well, here we are. We're dead in our trespasses. We can't do anything for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So God did it for us, and he did it on the cross. Amen. And all that blood that was shed, it was given, and it washes us clean. Now, we're, now we get to be in a covenant with God because he did it. And not only did he do that for us, removing our sins, but I love verse 15. He disarmed the rulers. And, and the, the idea, and I like how the, uh, the New Living said it, the spiritual yeah. uh, aspect of things. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame. Yeah, so, shame them publicly. And think about, <laughs> think about that. The, they want to shame us because of our sinfulness, but here, here God, because of his victory, washes away our sins and shames them yeah. for even attempting to come at his people. Man, I love yeah. that. I, it's I open love it. shame. I mean, we, we don't be shamed privately, mm -hmm. but imagine in front of everybody. Yeah. Oh. And he triumphs over <laughs> yeah. them in the cross. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He knew we, we, we weren't strong enough. We, yeah. we aren't Cause we're able, weak. but he is. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he walks right through it for us. He walks right through the cross. He walks, walks right through the death, the burial, and the resurrection. He rises up and he says, Now, these are mine. And come. Come, yeah. be a part, come be a part of my kingdom. Come be a part of my people. I love it. Well, we could spend all day talking about how amazing our God is. But let's move on to the second question. The second question is, what do we learn about people from these passages? What do we learn about people from these passages? 
you want to go it's first. all you, man. Go okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to kind of take a different twist on it. I was watching, and I'm trying, not trying to promote a show or anything like that, but we watched Last Man Standing. Teresa and I watched Last Man Standing last night. Oh, oh. And, uh, <laughs> and the episode was he was trying to get the children involved in church. So he carried them to church, and they sat there, and they just listened. And afterward, they walked out. It's like, okay, I, I didn't get nothing. There's no reason for me to be here. And basically, all three daughters said, okay, I'm not going to be there. And then uh, he started thinking, it's like, okay, i got to get them to get skin in the game. And he got one to make the, it's not Church Christ, one to make the robes, and then uh, one to, to play an instrument, and then one to, to do a lot. Anyway, he got everybody involved in yeah. the church. And then they loved it because they were part of it. And to me, it's like when, when I see walking and when I see rooted, how many of us, and I'm talking about myself also, are not really rooted in the church? Oh, yes, we go to church. Yes, right. we are a Christian. Yes, we, we do church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. But we're not really rooted. We're not really founded in the church. We're spectators in an audience yes. rather than soldiers in an army. Yes. And uh, t- to me, that, that's, that's what I know. It's like we got to get people, and, and we got to make sure that this is our home mm-hmm. at Bell Island or, or any congregation you're going to, and not just a place where we go. And we got to make sure the church is in us when we go out and we teach everybody. Mm-hmm. We got to make sure we are rooted and grounded in, 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 the, in the church, in the faith. Absolutely. I like that. Um, well, I'm going to go back to the same place that, uh, from, from my last statement. Uh, verse 9, for in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. Verse 10 then, about us. So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler. And So my union with Christ, and then he explains that union starts at baptism. It starts at that commitment. And... and uh, Okay, the, the the word union it should bring to our minds marriage. Okay, and it does. It brings to my mind marriage. And so here here's the the idea is um, someone um, some you know, somebody who's worked their whole life and they're multimillionaire and uh, they they've made their money and and at some point they're like man I'm missing something I'm you know I want to get married and so let's let's make the millionaire a woman you know and so she starts looking around for her high school sweetheart to reestablish that relationship he's working at the at the gas station back at her hometown you know and so she not goes not there's anything wrong with that nothing wrong with that <laughs> but but he's not making quite as much money as she has right she goes back she, she reestablishes that that relationships you know, it, it works and they get married well, now he is entitled he is united with her now he is a millionaire, just like that. Not because of what he's done. Not because of what he's done, but because of what she's done, right? Because she's a millionaire. Now he's. A, that's how marriage works. We're we're in this together. Everything I am, everything I have, and now we share it. You know, now we're together. And so overnight, he goes from being you know a mechanic to where he doesn't have to go back to work if he don't want to. Right. You know, he he's got he's got everything. And this is what Christ does for us through our union with Christ. Um, everything in our past. Is washed away, and now his past is our past, and even better, his future is our future. Yeah. We get to share in his glory. We get to share in his riches. We get to sh- and his riches are spiritual riches, not millions of dollars, right. but spiritual truths that that lead us into eternal life. And this is a, the union that God offers us in Jesus yeah. Christ. I've said it like this. Uh, God is everything and we are nothing, and he wants to be partners with us. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> who yeah. would turn that down? I mean, yeah, it's just insane right. to even yeah. think that we would think that we could do better than that. Right. You know, what is wrong with us to think that we could do better than what he is offering? But, yeah. but that's, our, that's our struggle, isn't it? That's mm-hmm. the sin that lives in us, our sinful nature that continues to creep its ugly head up, and we don't see the forest for the trees. You know, we don't see all that he has for us. And, uh, you know, C.S. Lewis said it's like a, a child playing in the mud puddle. And uh, when you offer him a, a vacation at the at the beach, mm-hmm. and he says, no, I'll just stay. i got water right here. i got what I I'm going to play in this mud puddle. <laughs> <laughs> I like, uh, I like uh, verse, uh, verse 13 as, it thinks, as we think about us. And it says, you, you were dead. Yeah, you not were, just asleep. <laughs> you were dead. Yeah. And I think that oftentimes we approach our sin and say, okay, yeah, I've done some things wrong. You know, I've, I've made a mistake here or I've messed up here, but I'm really not that bad. I'm not really dead. What I need is just a little bit of Jesus to take care of the yeah. little bit of sin that I have in my life. And, and, and Paul is saying, are you out of your mind? Yeah. <laughs> uh, one sin separates you so far from God as to, to make a gulf that cannot be yes. spanned by ourselves and our own efforts. And so you are dead in your sins. It's not just a little help that we need. I don't need just a little grace. I need all that he I offers. 
uh, in order to get uh, to get to that place where I am now complete in Him, as Paul says here. I, I think it's important to say that. Uh, don't downplay your sin. Own it, and then right. give it to the one who can take it out. Absolutely. And, and that's what Jesus offers us. Absolutely. It, um, if you ask just about anybody, are you a good person? Most people can say, well, yeah, I'm a good person. Yeah. yeah. No, you know, no. because <laughs> because too often we compare ourselves to someone else, right. you know, and so compared to Hitler, yeah, I'm, I'm a really good decent guy. person, yeah. you know. <laughs> but uh, when you go back to the standard, maybe you look at the Ten Commandments, you know. Uh, don't lie. <laughs> don't covet. Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, all these, these. Honor mom and dad. Honor mother. Oh, man. <laughs> So many things, and when you go through the list and you realize, man, I fall short. I have fallen short. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, what was the penalty? <laughs> Back then it was death, <laughs> yeah. you know? And we live under grace, and so you have an opportunity to give those to Christ, to say, I humble myself. I recognize that I've lied. I recognize that I didn't always honor my mother and my father. I recognize that, that I have coveted, and I have, you know, and, and repent and mm -hmm. give it away. And let him cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. That's right. That's so good. to recap real quick, we are lost, worthless, just terrible. God is wealthy beyond measure, and he wants us. Yep, he wants us. And we decide whether yes or no. And he doesn't want us because we're so lovable. <laughs> no, he, he wants us because he is. Yes. Yeah. And, and yeah, we have a choice. And like I said earlier, how would we? Not, why would we not choose right. that? Right. If we think that this world offers anything that even comes remotely close to what he is, we are fooling ourselves. And, and, and man, that's why that heart is deceitful above all else. That's right. Because it thinks that there's something better out there than God. And so I want to play these games, keep a foot in the world, and maybe a little bit over here in God, just in case the world doesn't come through. The world's not going to come gonna through. It's not going to ever come through. No. It's never. It's not. And it, it, back to uh, verse 6. And now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Um, that word accepted in, in the ESV is received. I think in the New King James it's also received. And so just as you received Christ yeah. Jesus, you know. Um, so I went back and looked, and the better translation, the literal translation is picked up. Um, just as you picked up Christ Jesus as your Lord. And, and the, the, I guess, proper context would be uh, the idea of putting on new clothes. You have picked up a new garment. You have put on a new identity. That's not who you are anymore. You have accepted Christ. You have received these new clothes don't go wallowing in the mud. Yeah, yeah. Galatians three twenty seven. Right? Yeah. We we have clothed ourselves with Christ. Absolutely. So that's good. Or twenty six. It's one of those. Two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now let's get serious. Okay. Not that we haven't been. Yeah. So question number three. How will you put these passages into practice? How will you put these passages into practice? I'm going first every time. I mean, I'll, I'll go first. We like again. it when you go okay. first. Um, the the okay. seniority. I got a preference. This is always bad. My wife says, "When you got preference, something you don't need to say anyway." The kids, laugh, the teenagers, laugh at me when I say this. I, I say dozer. Dozer. Anyway, I've had a dozer out the farm clearing fence rows and trees and stuff like that. And it's amazing how sometimes he'll look at me and say, "You want this tree?" And I say, "No, take it out." And it'll take him maybe 10, 15 minutes to push that tree out of the way. And then some trees, I say, "Take that one out," and he'll walk over there or put, go over there and just push over real easy. Basically, at the roots. Stuff we can't see. We mm -hmm. see the tree on top. The roots are all underneath. Some roots are really solid. Some roots are really grounded in there. Some of them are just tight. And some of them are just huge tree with no roots. I've been examining my life here lately. I guess I'm getting personal now. I want to make sure I'm doing what I can do. I, I, I know I'm not safe through my works. Right. Because somebody preached about that Sunday. But I want to make sure I am doing everything I can to help, help to be the person that the others need to be or for me to be around them. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes I find, I mean, a lot of times I fail. And I, I just kind of make sure that I'm doing what I can, uh, especially teaching Bible class. I want to make sure that, that I am wording in a way to where they can understand it. Sure. And so I'm doing a lot more self-reflection. Uh, that may not be what he's talking about here, but that's where my mind went. So. No, that's good. This is about what you're going to do based on what you read, and that's, that's, that's perfect. That's perfect. I want to be well-grounded and well-rooted. I like verse 8. It says, see to it that no one takes you captive by... 
uh, philosophy and empty deceit. Read that verse in the NLT again. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense. High-sounding <laughs> nonsense. That's what I think I have a tendency to 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 want to chase after the latest and the greatest and the next big thing, rather than just. And, and sometimes it's just high-sounding junk. Yeah. And so, just like you said, staying rooted in Christ. Uh, not chasing the wind, but chasing the Holy Spirit, who is the wind of God. Uh, that's that's what I need to do a, a lot more of, and, and to to be able to discern. Okay, what is empty? What is deceit? What is these things? And what isn't? Uh, the only way to do that is to to keep your nose in the book. And so, uh, I'm trying to do even more of that than than maybe yeah. I, I would do normally. Now, I love the example. Of the Holy Spirit is not an earthquake. It's not a strong power. It's just that that, that still small yes. voice. Yes. Yeah listening to that rather than to what everybody else is trying to say is the next greatest and best mm -hmm. thing. Uh, that, that's where I stand there. How about you? Okay, so um, what, I, what I thought about for, for me is it's, it's often easy for me to judge myself based on my intentions, but I judge other people based on their actions, mm -hmm. especially when I'm behind the wheel in the truck. <laughs> Okay, especially driving. Driving brings out the worst in me sometimes. And so uh, my practical application is to remember that um, to have the Spirit of Christ and allow Christ to actually... He, I put him on. He's, he's, a, he's supposed to be living. It should be seen. It should be recognizable. You know, the fruit of the Spirit should be coming from my life. And so quit judging people based on their actions and, and giving myself a, you know, a free pass mm -hmm. because, oh, what I meant to. I, this was... You know, no. No, let's be merciful to everyone, especially in this time with the pandemic and all that's going on, the stress that we all mm -hmm. uh, are feeling. Most people are, are in a spirit of discontent right now. And because of Christ, we don't have to be. We get to rise above it. You know, We get to rise above all this because he strengthens us and he has given us what we could never you know, do for ourselves. Good. You said, okay, I'm going to throw myself under the bus. Actually, I was driving a bus with this story. Uh, <laughs> I love life. Is it Life 360? It is. And it's I'm, an app, by the yes. way, that you can tell where your family members are. Very good app. Yeah. I don't have it, but very good I app. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving the church bus, and, and I learned my lesson. I don't do this anymore, but um, or I hope I don't. But anyway, I'm driving the church bus, and, and yes, I was speeding a little bit. Mm. And one of the girls in the back said, uh, Keith, my mom said you need to slow down. Oh. And I think like, <laughs> your mom, what is all? And she, basically her app was telling the mom that I was driving too fast. And it really made me, okay, and yes, I slowed down. <laughs> <laughs> but it really made me aware it's not just the teenagers watching me. It's somebody, I don't even know where her mama was, but her mama was watching her daughter under my care going too fast. Right. And when, when you start, start thinking about how many people are watching mm, us, how many right. people are just seeing how we're living our life. Good point. And we got to make sure that, that we're walking correctly. That's so. great. That's a good point. All right. Last question is, who else needs to hear this, yes. right? You can. You can share this with, uh, with anybody out there that might benefit from this. So we hope that you'll do that. We hope you have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, if you're watching this on Wednesday, Thanksgiving's tomorrow. <laughs> and so enjoy that time, even if it's a limited time with your family or not as many as normal or whatever that looks like. Uh, but count your blessings this week and realize all that God has done for us and what he gives us. And I'll look forward, and I know these guys will, to seeing you on Sunday. Have a great week, and God bless you.